Our vision is to reach the entire valley for Christ. There's 4.7 million people in the valley. Even if God doubled our impact tomorrow, and we were reaching over 70,000 people, do you know what percentage of the valley we'd be reaching? 1.5%. Is that big? No. So this is what I, I try to tell you all the time, and I just want to keep saying it until I sound like a broken record. We are not a big church. We are a small church with a big vision to reach this valley for Jesus Christ. And we're gonna do everything we can to reach this valley. This Christmas, I wanna cast a vision of how we can help other churches around us. If we wanna reach our city for Jesus, it requires what? More than us. If we wanna reach our city for Jesus Christ in our lifetime, it requires that CCV is not the only church that's thriving, it requires that every church in our city, we give an opportunity to thrive and grow and just let Jesus be known across our whole city. It has to require more than us. This Christmas, we're gonna take up a special offering as a church. And listen to me, 100% of what you give will 100% be given away to churches that we've been working with around all of our campuses to help them grow. Have you ever wondered what happens backstage while things are going on out front? I'm gonna give you a little insight into one of the things that happens no matter who's preaching uh, on the stage, after the first service, there's a group that meets and just talks through the whole s service. Now, every, every moment, every, every, every element, and really every line of the sermon will critique. So we say things like, uh, that landed really well, why don't you spend a little more time here? Or uh, this wasn't quite clear, is there another way you can say it to, to make it clear? Sometimes I hear things like this, that joke was really funny, don't say it again. We care like crazy about the excellence of what happens for you because we think you deserve it. And I have never broken the confidence to share publicly uh, any critique I've given privately. But I'm, I'm gonna break that today. It's probably the only time ever. Is I wanna tell you the critique I gave to Ashley last week after the service. And this was pretty much the primary critique. Thank you for making us proud of our church. <laughs> Everyone in the room, their, their, their heads started nodding, and I see that you agree. This More Than Us campaign is significant. I don't know of any church anywhere that has done anything quite like it to take up an offering at Christmas to 100% give to other churches in the area. That just doesn't happen. And I want to, if you weren't here last week, this is why you need to come every single week, because something exciting could happen and you don't want to miss it. But let me just review some of the highlights that Ashley used to introduce the purpose of this campaign more than us. You know that we are one church in many locations. We have nine campuses. You will never hear anyone say that again from this stage, because next week, we open campus number 10 out here in Verado, and we just thank God for the expansion of that. <laughs> Throughout this year, uh, if you average all of the campuses together every week at CCV, you know, you know how many people come every week? This is average over the year, 34,226. Can you just thank God for that? This is just amazing what he's doing in our midst. That number is going to shoot up next week to average nearly 35,000 because so many people come to our 100 Christmas services on 10 campuses. And I just want you to know, if you have not yet invited someone to a Christmas service, you're going to want to because this is what's going to happen. I just know. I'm seeing what they're doing to prepare the service, the video elements, the experiences, the messages, the music. If you don't bring someone, you will be sitting in the service 
and thinking to yourself, man, if so-and-so was just here next to me, it would be just what they need. Don't miss out on the opportunity to share this extraordinary experience. But the number we're most excited about is not 34,000 or 4,000. It's, it's this 4,000 number here, 4,255. That's the number of people who have been baptized into Christ this year at CCV. I, I don't, I, give God some, some praise for that. We never expected that, that we just, we threw out this large number, 4,000, we thought, yeah, right, God exceeded our wildest dreams. Now that's caused many of you to say, boy, this is such a big church. We don't say that around here. We are not a big church. We have a big vision, but we're not a big church. Why? Because we don't, we don't measure our size by the number of people who come but by the needs of those who don't. We live in a city of 4.7 million people. Most of them are heading to a Christless eternity. And if you look at our number, 35,000 over the year, and then compare it to the need of our city, our market share is 0.75%. That is less than 1% of people in Phoenix attend CCV. Are you satisfied with 1%? I know you're not. Because we are, we are intent on reaching the entire valley for Christ. If we want to change the culture around here, if we want safer schools and better homes and more secure marriages and, and more honest businesses, we don't need 0.75%. We need 10% of the population to change our culture. To transform our culture, it needs to go to 20%. So how big do we have to be to reach 20%? We've run the numbers. We need 200 campuses, not 10, not 20, 200. That's beyond our reach. It's not beyond God's, but it's beyond our reach right now. So you might be asking with this more than us campaign, why would we invest in others when there's so much for us to do? That's a valid question. And if you remember our mission, you will know the answer to the question. Our mission as a church is to reach the entire valley for Jesus Christ. We are dead set on every man, every woman, every child having a realistic opportunity to hear and follow Jesus Christ. What's it gonna take for us to reach our entire valley? You know what it's gonna take. In fact, say it with me, more than us. We can't just be about us. CCV alone will never reach our vision to reach this entire valley for Jesus Christ. We need the help of others. Now, the good news is that there are currently over 800 churches in the Phoenix Valley, not 200, 800. But clearly, with 800 churches, we have not yet reached this valley for Jesus Christ. We have not yet changed our culture. Why? It's not a capacity issue. We have enough buildings, but we don't have enough effective ministries. Now, that's no knock on anybody else. I, I'm just making an observation here that we have not accomplished our vision, even with 800 churches. So what we've decided to do is much like a venture capitalist. You know, venture capitalists look around and they go, okay, where are, where are great ideas matched with great people in the right place at the right time? but they don't have the right resources. And a venture capitalist will infuse funds into an organization that is, they have, a, they have a great vision, they have a good strategy, they have the right people, they're in the right place, it's the right time, but they don't have the right resources. If we could provide some resources to those around us whose vision is already good, then they could support a similar vision to reach this valley for Jesus Christ. And I, I wanna share with you just one story of one of the churches around our 10 campuses that we're gonna support through this campaign. The, the name of the church in English is United in One Vision. Unidos in Una Vision. It's a Spanish-speaking church. 
And when you hear their story, you will understand why they are such a great investment. Since moving to the U.S. 20 years ago from Honduras, Pastor Roy and his family have been on a mission to lead people to Jesus. They currently meet in the auditorium of a local school located in the Southwest Valley. Empezamos en el 2015, la iglesia, pero como ministerio unidos una visión se comenzó en el 2008. Trabajamos con diferentes iglesias en lo que era evangelismo, con la gente de la calle y todo eso. Pues la pasión principal es la gente que está perdida, pues. Entonces hasta ahorita nuestro deseo es que la iglesia crezca. Y yo siempre le menciono a los hermanos, a los líderes, que nosotros ahorita estamos haciendo un esfuerzo y estamos sacrificando algo. God began to use their passion to not only make disciples inside their church, but to take them outside the church walls to reach all kinds of people throughout the city. Equipped with an RV and a clear mission, they regularly serve the least and the lost whenever and wherever they can. Ahorita cada sábado estamos yendo a diferentes lugares como las plazas, los parques, eh, diferentes puntos estratégicos de la, de la comunidad donde la gente está mirando el mensaje. Nos enfocamos más en, en que la gente recuerde que hay un Salvador. El RV, la primera idea que tuvimos con él era tenerlo para algo que atrajera a la gente, porque Creo que aquí en la ciudad no hay nadie más que lo hace así. In order to prioritize the church and its resources, Pastor Roy and his family all carry jobs outside of their responsibilities with the church to provide for their families. Eh, estamos uh, con la visión de que la iglesia tenga lo mejor. Y por esa razón no hemos uh, pedido o exigido un salario. Lo que, se, lo que se ha recibido de ofrendas, de donaciones que hemos tenido, todo lo invertimos en, en cosas que necesitamos para la iglesia, pero también para, para hacer los, las, um, los alcances que hacemos a la comunidad. While meeting in the school for the last several years, the church has been praying for a building they can call their own they continue to believe that God will provide the resources necessary to achieve that goal. Cuando llegamos a este edificio, una de las cosas que creímos que el Señor nos mostraba era que íbamos a estar cinco años aquí. Ya estamos en el quinto año aquí en la, en la escuela. Y comenzando el año, también um, recibimos una palabra de que este era el año donde nosotros podíamos tener un, un nuestro propio lugar. Estamos creyendo por eso. Y hay un grupo de intercesión de, de los miércoles que han estado orando cada miércoles. Se está orando por nuestro lugar. Y la manera en la que ustedes nos han contactado, solamente podemos decir que es una respuesta de Dios a la oración que hemos tenido cada miércoles durante todo este año. Pastor Roy and his family pray faithfully and expectantly that God will continue to move in their church with or without a permanent location. Their vision for unity in the church and their mission to reach the lost continues to drive everything they do. Si somos cristianos, todos seguimos a Cristo, creemos en Cristo y trabajamos para ese mismo rey. Creo que como hijos de Dios, todos tenemos que unirnos, no importa nuestras denominaciones. Si 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 creemos en él, tenemos que seguir y avanzar y unirnos porque creo que unidos podemos alcanzar más. Eh, hay muchas iglesias y todas están en diferentes áreas y algunas hacen diferentes actividades, pero nuestro propósito principal es predicar a Jesús, es predicar que Él murió por nosotros. Entonces, unidos podemos alcanzar muchísimo más. Debemos de trabajar juntos como iglesias y ayudarnos como iglesia porque pues trabajamos para el mismo Rey, trabajamos para la misma compañía, en otras palabras, y yo creo que, que Dios le agrada eso. Doesn't that make you proud of your church? It, to be honest, more than being proud of your church, we want you to be proud of the church. 
And, and Pastor Roy, I just want to say to you on behalf of CCV, damos gracias a Dios por ustedes y el buen trabajo de su iglesia. We thank God for you and the good work of your church. Honramos los sacrificios de su familia en el nombre de Jesucristo. We honor the sacrifices of your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Dios les bendiga. Now, I don't know how this is going to settle with all of you. This whole idea, you've seen the numbers at CCV, and you know we're not satisfied with those numbers. 4,255 baptisms, we're not satisfied with that. And actually, I want to share a story of one man who reflected on the baptisms of CCV and then this More Than Us campaign. His name is Dennis, and he emailed me last week again. We've been in, in contact for about six months now. And six months ago, uh, Dennis wrote to me and said, my wife and I love CCV. We love coming here, but you keep talking about baptism. And, and you know, baptism as an adult, you go under the water, you're immersed underwater, imitating Jesus' death, and then you come up out of the water, imitating Jesus' resurrection. He said, I, I get that, but I was sprinkled as a baby. Do I need to be baptized as an adult? So it was an honest question. I sent him the scriptures that have led us to that conclusion. And he read those, and to his credit, he said, you know what, that makes sense to me. Look, if Jesus is Lord, and Jesus was immersed as an adult and told us to do the same, why would we not imitate Jesus and receive this gift of baptism? So Dennis uh, emailed me back and said, I'm gonna get baptized, but I want my grandsons to baptize me. They were 18 years old, they had just been baptized, they lived in San Diego. So they went on a trip to San Diego, he told me he was gonna get baptized, when he got back, he emailed me again and said, hey, the timing didn't work, so I, I, I'm not baptized. But during that time, at the Surprise Campus, they had a, a ton of other people getting baptized. And you can't watch that without being inspired. Seeing the joy coming up out of the water, couples being baptized together, families being baptized together, and the celebration and the testimony of that event. And Dennis said, doggone, I, I am going to get baptized. And so he was. Problem, his wife was ill and couldn't get baptized with him. And so he had to wait. And then he emailed me just last week after Ashley's message. Here's what he said. Uh, on December 4th, I baptized my wife Judy at a pool in a senior center. You should know, Dennis is 80 years old. Like, so you, apparently you can teach an old dog a new trick. In church today, he said, Ashley explained the success of CCV and the number of baptisms performed so far in 2019. I wanted to message you so you could add Judy's into your count. Although not performed at CCV, it was the result of CCV. And then he says this, in addition, we love the idea of reaching out to other churches in the valley through more than us. We will surely give to that endeavor next week. Now, I don't know if this is appropriate to say about an 80-year-old, but dude, you're a stud. And I, I, hope that you, I hope that all of you catch that vision like Dennis did. And I want to be fair with you. I'm going to show you the genesis of this vision because more than us didn't start with us. It actually started with Jesus. And I want to share two quotes from Jesus. They're about 18 months apart. They seem contradictory. Uh, the first quote comes from Matthew 10. He was sending out his 12 apostles. There were 12 apostles. They went out in pairs. So six teams to go out to preach. Jesus wasn't coming with them. And he gave them this command. Do not go among Gentiles. Now Gentiles are non-Jewish people. So go to only Jews. Or enter any town of the Samaritans. Samaritans ethnically were half Jewish. So if they're not Jewish, don't preach to them. If they're, not, if they're Gentiles, don't go there. Even if they're half Jewish, don't go there. Go to Jews only. That's what Jesus said. 18 months later, the last command Jesus ever gave, which is our first priority, is this. Go and make disciples of all nations. So, so what gives? How do you get from here to there? Go only to Jews and now go to everybody. It is not that Jesus changed his mind. It was his strategy to center the gospel in Israel, 
And then from Israel, the good news would go from the Jews to all the nations. That was always his strategy. If you were to put this in scientific terms, you would say Jesus is centrifugal. Now, centrifugal motion, if you'll remember the, the, the merry-go-rounds when you were a kid, it, the, the faster they spun it, the harder you had to hold on because centrifugal motion takes something that's spinning and wants to throw it ever outward. Jesus is centrifugal. If you, if you are a Christian, you will be thrown ever outward. Now, that is the opposite of virtually every other religion. Most religions say it's outside in. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about Buddhism or Hinduism or Taoism. How do you become a good religious person? You follow more rules. You obey more commands. You go to more services. You say more prayers. You offer more sacrifices. And you get closer and closer to the center. And as you move to the center, you have to stiff arm those who are further out than you. Because they might contaminate you. So most religion, the gravitational pull is inward. Christianity is the opposite. You cannot be a good Christian and dive towards the center. Jesus measures your faith by how far flung that you go. I'm going to show you why that is so important. Uh, this is the gyroscope. You, you play with these when you're, you're a kid. It, it's simply a toy that you spin it, and it it's really pretty um, remarkable what it does. If, if I were just to stand this gyroscope on this stand, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to fall. Because gravity will always pull you down. But if you add a little bit of centrifugal motion to this, this little gyroscope can actually stand and defy the laws of gravity. I think this is a good metaphor for the church. The reason we have 800 churches that are not making an impact is because they've lost their gravitational, their, their centrifugal force and gravity is taking over and they wind up laying down on the job. Jesus intends us to be centrifugal, but that motion will always slow without an intentional effort to push farther outward. So I want to show you where this centrifugal principle began. There was a moment in time, you can, you can point to it and say, this is where Jesus let the cat out of the bag. He showed the power of centrifugal motion. It's in Luke chapter 5. Beginning in verse 12, it says, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. Now, leprosy was a nasty skin disease. The word itself literally means to peel because the disease caused your flesh to rot and would peel off your body. If you want to read about it, Leviticus 13, it's disgusting. And, and, and because it was so contagious, the rabbis made a law that anybody with leprosy had to be pulled out of the community. You leave your home, you leave the city, you leave the synagogue. And if you went to the marketplace, or if anyone approached you, you had to warn them of your contagion by crying out, unclean. The law said you can't come within six feet of another person. Why six feet? Because the stature of the average Jew, if you stretch out the arm, was just under three feet. So if both had their arms stretched out, they could not touch each other within a six-foot range. But then the rabbi said, if the wind is blowing in your direction, 150 feet wouldn't be enough. This man actually broke the law by coming to Jesus. Listen to what it says in, verse, in the next verse. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him. Here's what he said. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Why in the world would he think Jesus would be willing to make him clean? Because every other rabbi was not. In fact, there was one rabbi I read about who bragged that he pelted lepers with rocks when he saw them to keep them at bay. You think, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. You only think that because you know Jesus. If you're a rabbi, that makes sense. See, because religion is always outside in, not inside out. And Jesus, in the very next verse, reached out his hand and touched the man. You should have been there. Everyone like gasped 
Peter swallowed his larynx. <gasps> no. Why? Because they assumed that if Jesus touched the leper, that the leper would make Jesus unclean. And Jesus, truth be told, he didn't even have to touch the leper. He could have said, be clean. He could have commanded it. There was one guy Jesus healed from 20 miles away. The touch is completely unnecessary. But Jesus said, I am willing, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And this moment, whether you realize it or not, this moment changed Christianity from every other religion. The other religions say it's outside in. You, 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 you stay away from sinners. Don't go around with people that, that drink or smoke or chew or cuss or, you know, the list is long. You've heard it. Don't be around those people because those icky people will make you unclean. And Jesus proved with the touch of his hand that he believed cleanness was more contagious than uncleanness. Isn't that good? And I think about some of you who came today. Maybe you've never been to CCV before. Maybe you've never been to church before. And my guess is that some of you even kind of joked about it on the way in. Boy, you know, a friend invited you and you finally said yes and you're coming in and you go, well, you know, lightning's gonna strike the church now because I'm here. I bet the roof caves in if I walk in a church because I'm a sinner. If you think for a minute that your uncleanness is more contagious than Jesus' cleanness, welcome to CCV. We're all lepers that have been touched by the master's hand. He has made us clean. And my friend, you belong here among sinners who have found that the cleanness of Christ is more contagious than your uncleanness, than your past, than your sins, than your regrets, than your remorse or guilt or shame. Jesus can make you clean simply by the touch of his hand. Now, what happens next is really kind of odd. It doesn't make sense in our culture, but Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Why in the world would Jesus send the guy to a priest when Jesus has already made him clean? This is important. It may not make sense in our culture, but it, it made sense in theirs. The priests... We're the, were the arbiters, the brokers of who is in and who is out. And if Jesus just took care of the guy's physical condition but didn't restore him to the community, then the man would still be alienated from his friends and his family. So Jesus tells him, uh, don't tell anyone, but go to the priest. And this is what happened. This is always what's going to happen. It's going to happen here because it, this is what always happens. Yet the news about him spread all the more. So the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. Can you see it in your mind? Can you see it all across our city, all around our 10 campuses, as we partner with other churches, that crowds of people come, not just 35,000 to CCV, but hundreds of thousands all around to all kinds of churches, meeting all kinds of needs in all kinds of neighborhoods, some of where we are, some where we are not. Some meeting needs that we meet well, some meeting needs that we are not or cannot right now meet. This is why more than us is so critical to us. I want you to be, I want you to be a part of that. I want to say one more thing before and we draw this to a conclusion because this, this frightens me. Jesus said, to whom much has been given, much will be required. I tremble at the thought of standing before Jesus and Jesus asking me, what did you do with what I gave you? And me saying, oh, I thought that was for me. Jesus never gives a gift because he loves you. He gives you a gift because he loves someone else. 
And if God has given you resources, skills, time, abilities, he intends for you to use it for more than us, for someone else. That is true not only of you as an individual, but us as a church. Look around the campus where, you're, where you are right now. Your staff on that campus is stellar. Our campus pastors are, are top shelf. Our children's workers are unbelievably good, student workers. The, the volunteers that are working in the parking lot or greeting you outside or serving you coffee in the cafe, we, God has just blessed us with an amazing group of people on staff and volunteers. And through you, he's blessed us with incredible resources. Our facilities, our technology, it, it's it is amazing what God is able to give to us through your generosity. And, and I just want you to know, like we're not bragging about this. This is just true. We steward every dollar with vicious care because it matters. Because of how we leverage volunteers, le letting you serve in actual real ministry, because of that, we lower the cost of doing ministry. And because we can scale, we lower the cost of doing ministry. CCV is one of the best investments of ministry dollars. It will go further faster because of the way we're operating. So I, I just want you to know, we're grateful for all the resources that you give. But there will come a day when God asks us, what did you do with what I gave you? And the principle is this, all gifts are to be given away. And I just want you to know, we encourage you to tithe. <laughs> well, God encourages you to tithe through the Bible. And here's why. Your greatest blessing is not in what God gives you, but what God does through you. And we want that blessing for you. And we, we do the same thing with the church resources that we ask you to do with your resources. We tithe. 10% of every dollar that is given goes to more than us. It's our mission program here, near, and far. There are organizations in our city here that we give to that deal with human trafficking, <laughs> that deal with medical care for underinsured or non-insured, that deal with refugees, that deal with homelessness. We believe that it is our obligation to give away 10% of what God gives to us. Some are regional ministries that we support. Some are international ministries. But you've heard me say, you've heard Ashley say, the local church is the hope of the world. And if we are celebrating our mission program where we give away 10%, why will we not also give away part of that 10% to churches around us that we share their mission? I want to quote what our senior pastor said last week. We're trying to make it hard to go to hell and easy to get to Jesus. That's why more than us matters so much to us. So here's the takeaway. 100%. That's not what we're asking you to give. That's who we're asking to give. Everyone on every seat on every campus, we want you to give something. Now the Holy Spirit will tell you what, how much. That's his job, not mine. But we want everyone to participate. Here's why. I don't want you, two years from now, ten years from now, to see our market share moving from less than 1% to 10% to 20%. I don't want you to say, in 2019, I had an opportunity to get on the ground floor of more than us, and I missed it. I want you to celebrate that you were part of an extraordinary movement of God, an unprecedented campaign to unite the church of Jesus Christ. One of the very last things that Jesus prayed for, John 17, it was the longest reported, recorded prayer of Jesus. He said, Father, I pray not only for these, but for those who will hear of me because of their preaching. And I pray that they would be one as I am in you and you are in me. May they all be one in us. And here's the catch. So that the world will know that you have sent me. And part of the reason the world doesn't know about Jesus is because churches have not been united. And we're gonna, we're gonna nail a stake in the ground. 
and we're gonna make a statement so everyone can hear about Jesus Christ and have a legitimate opportunity in our valley to follow Jesus Christ. So how can you be a part of that? If you have downloaded the mobile app, then just light it up and look for this little icon, More Than Us, that will take you to the giving page. If you don't have the mobile app, why? But you can go to the website and look for the same icon, More Than Us, and there will be a button that says, Give Now. Some of you, I guess, are guests. We never ask our guests to give. But if you're a follower of Jesus, this is not about us. It's about more than us. And maybe before you walk out of the room that you're in, you could find one of these giving boxes. You you notice we don't take an offering. But there are giving boxes if you would like to contribute. There is an envelope on the side. Pull it out, write on it, more than us, and we will make sure it gets to that campaign. If you don't have cash, and like who does, you could go to the lobby and use a giving kiosk uh, to swipe a credit card. That's how you give. What should you give? The Holy Spirit's gonna tell you that. And so we wanna create a space right now where he can. And I'm gonna ask the bands on all of our campuses to come to the stage, and we're gonna sing a song together that is called As One. It's so appropriate. And as we sing this song, would you just ask the Holy Spirit, what should I give? When the song is over, you're gonna hear from Ashley again, an important uh, message about this campaign, uh, and then he's gonna pray us out. While the bands are coming, I just wanna close with this illustration. Now, any of you follow the Army-Navy football game? Army, Navy. You know how many years they've been playing that game? Anyone know? 119. Who, who do you guess has won more games? Army, Navy. Navy, Army. Ar- anyone say Army? Anyone say Navy? Yeah, it's Navy. Navy has actually won 60 of the 119 games. Uh, I see we have some sailors in our midst. Good for you. Does it seem odd that the Army and Navy are rivals? That's only, that's only on the playing field. On the battlefield, they are unidos en una visión. And when churches are not united, it's just like the Army-Navy game. It's because we're playing a game instead of engaging the enemy. This is not a game. Our enemy is attacking the souls of 4. million people right in the city where we live. Not on our watch. We are going to make sure that every man, every woman, every child has the best possible opportunity to hear about Jesus and follow him. Would you stand and sing this together with us as one? As one. That's our vision for the valley, that churches would become one and reach more people for Jesus together. And as we rolled out that vision last weekend, I didn't know this was gonna happen, but one of the pastors of the churches we're helping, he showed up to one of our services with his wife and his whole entire staff. And afterwards, he caught me. And he went to say something, but he couldn't speak initially because tears were flowing down his face. And he told me, Ashley, I sat through that service and my wife and I, we just cried the whole entire time because we can't believe a church would do this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He just kept saying thank you. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, well, don't thank us too much yet. We don't even know how much we're gonna collect to be able to give to all these churches. But then I caught myself and I thought, I don't know what we're going to be able to collect for this, but here's what I know about you, CCV. You are a generous church. And we're gonna give generously. I believe that. And so what I'm gonna ask is what you already heard from Mark is I'm just gonna ask all of us to give, 100% of us. And you might say, well, how much should we give? That's between you and God. And I'm trusting God's spirit will prompt you for what's right for you. But can I make a recommendation? I would give a gift this Christmas, which is Jesus' birthday, by the way, not ours. I would give a gift that's reflective of how God has blessed your life this past year. Has God really made a difference in your life? I mean, here at CCV, is your life being changed? Let's give a gift reflective of that so we can help other churches do the same with their people. And I'm gonna ask you not to delay. Would you give today? Because all of our Christmas Eve services start this Thursday. 
You can check out all the times. I hope you're inviting people, but at our Christmas services, I wanna be able to announce what you've given to this More Than Us campaign so we can bless other churches. I'm so excited to be able to do that. And CCV, I could not be more proud and humbled to pastor a church that has such a big vision to reach this valley for Jesus. I'm gonna pray that God just spurs all of us this Christmas to be generous. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in our church. Thank you for what you're doing across the valley. And I just pray that you'd you'd take all of our hearts and would you just help us to make a decision to be generous. I pray for those that can only give a little, thank you for them. For those that can give a lot, God, would you just help them to be generous? But for all of us, will we just give something so we can impact our city for Jesus? Father, this is um, a time where we remember what you gave to us. You gave everything. We want to give back to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, don't forget, all of our Christmas Eve services start this Thursday. You can check out all the times online. Make sure you do not come alone. We'll see you then. Have a great week, CCB.